What's going on Patriots? My name is Aaron Renshaw here with THS News Media. This month on Patriot Vision we're going to be talking about basketball, a few serious topics, and another round of 20 questions. But to start out with, we're going to go to Nate Morton and listen to his take on Cinderella. As you may already know, this year the theater will be performing Cinderella by Rodgers and Hammerstein. And after many, many weeks of practice, the musical is only a few days away. So we decided to ask Gabby Patentler, who plays Cinderella, about the musical. How does it feel to be Cinderella? Uh, and can you tell us what comes along with having the lead role? Um, I'm really excited about being Cinderella. My third grade self is screaming. It's really exciting. Um, it's a lot of work. Um, you know, practice every day. But if you love it as much as I do, it doesn't feel like it. Why should our viewers come to see Cinderella? If they come to see it, uh, what should they look forward to? Um, you should come see it because it's an amazing show. We've all looked really hard. Um, I think you should look forward to the carriage scene because that's pretty cool. And yeah, I think it's really great. So you guys should come see it. We also decided to interview Mr. Meyer, the director, about how the production has been going so far and what makes Cinderella different. I think Cinderella is the first show that I've done that has been somewhat uh, magical, uh, something that deals with a little bit of mystery behind it, uh, with, with the musical. Uh, we have done shows aimed towards families before, such as Annie or uh, Hello Dolly, something like that. But you know, I think uh, this is just a title that everyone knows. You know, not everyone knows Hello Dolly. Uh, everybody knows Annie, but but you know, uh, most people uh, know Cinderella. And I've had a, already a lot of great response. People excited about bringing their children and making a, a night out of it. And so that's, that's a lot of fun to get young people into the theater to watch this show and hopefully they'll become theater lovers as well. Okay, uh, why did you choose to do uh, Cinderella this year? Well, last year we did a, a show that was uh, somewhat adult and very controversial. And you know, I've never done Cinderella. I've always wanted to do Cinderella. Um, when I was growing up, it used to be on television once a year, and it was such a big deal. You know, we didn't have uh, DVDs, VHS, nothing like that. We had three channels. I know I sound really old, but uh, it was a big deal, and it was very exciting to, to watch Cinderella every year when you were a kid. And so it's somewhat nostalgic for me to, to watch it, to think back of when I was real little and we would all gather around and all my cousins and at my grandmother's house and watch Cinderella. Mm -hmm. So it's been a lot of fun and I've really enjoyed it and I love the score. I mean, you can't beat Rodgers and Hammerstein. the crew and the orchestra make the final touches, I will encourage you to get your tickets early. You can give them for $7 early or $9 at the door. The shows are from the 15th to the 18th of November, so make sure to come check it out. I'm Nate with THS Media, signing off. Up next we're going to talk to Michael and talk about a little bit more of a serious note with mental health issues. Something I have to engrave in my head is that this pain is part of the process. I live and I fight. And as long as I do that, the trials get more difficult. Up to this point, I failed to fight the temptation. It's strong, but I keep trying and I'm failing and making mistakes since the day I finally succeed. I am in control of my mind and my actions. I can begin to close the void in my mind created by mental illness. But right now I have to know that my journey won't end until I die. There is no destination for me, only a clear path to follow. Now I know this is gonna take some time. I am battling this alone and I will continue to make mistakes, but eventually I will grow into a stronger will. I just can't give up on my vision, my dream. And then the void will close and the storm will pass and I'll get my happiness and my worth. Remember, pain is part of the process. A strong will will fight the demons. Trial, 
fail, learn. And then continue. If you remember last month, guys, we had, an, we had an episode of 20 questions with Nate Morton. He decided to go out and talk to another teacher this week. Let's see how he did. Remember our 25 question segment with Mr. Hoover? Well, it turns out it was a big hit, and we decided to try it again with a different teacher. However, this time we are only doing 20 questions, and we will interview Mr. Bjornsson. During the segment, I will ask Mr. Bjornsson 20 rapid fire questions ranging from favorite candy bar to what's your shoe size. Now let's begin. Okay, so how long do you think you'd last in a zombie apocalypse? Uh, five minutes. Five minutes. If you had one superpower, what would it be? Omniscience. What was that? Omniscience. Uh, if you <laughs> if you had a theme song, what would it be? Uh, Super Mario Brothers. Yeah, Super Mario Brothers. Yeah. Uh, favorite animal? Favorite animal. Uh, a Nautilus. Okay, so one person, alive or dead, that you'd like to have dinner with? Uh, James Lovelock. Why him? He's this really crazy scientist that just kind of knows all this really weird stuff. He's uh, kind of fun to meet him. Okay. What's the farthest you've been from home? Uh, probably Borneo. Borneo. What is your shoe size? Ten and a half. Ten and a half? Uh, math question here. What are the first ten digits of pi after the decimal point? 3.14159... I got five. 26535. Alright, I missed a few. What would be the title of your autobiography? I don't think they'd write an autobiography about me. Alright. Alright. Do you have a least favorite song? Right now, Toto by Africa. I bless the rains down in Africa. Really? Toto by Toto. Oh. I liked it, and then I've heard it about a thousand times on the radio lately. True. Would you rather fi fight one horse-sized duck or a hundred duck-sized horses? hundred duck-sized horses. Why? I feel like I could kick a hundred duck-sized horses. If you were a car, what kind would you be? Probably like a Honda or a Toyota, because you know, kind of economical. Why not a supercar? Because I don't have a lot of money. What is your favorite candy bar? Uh, a Kit Kat. Kit Kat. What is your least favorite celebrity? Probably, um, oh, what is that one? I can't remember her name right now. There's a reality star. Kim um, that one, Kim Kardashian. If you know how I feel, why would you say that? Like, you put me in such an uncomfortable situation, like, you know it. Definitely my least favorite. Okay, <laughs> so you're on death this. row. You've um, goofed up. What will your last meal be? I really like curry, like some Thai curry. What do you prefer, warm or cold weather? Cold weather. Why cold? I can always put another jacket on. True. If you could steal credit for any invention, which one would you claim? The light bulb. The light bulb? Yeah, steal from Edison. Okay. Because he stole it from somebody else. What is your favorite color? Green. Green. And lastly, what animal do you think would make the best leader when all of humanity is gone? Best leader. Octopuses. Why an octopus? They're super smart. Maybe smarter than us. Hmm. If not octopuses, crows. Because nice. they're super smart too. Okay. Maybe smarter than us. We'd like to thank Mr. Bjornsson for doing this with us. We got some fun answers out of him. But until next time, I'm Nate Morton with THS Media, signing off. To finish off this month, guys, we're going to talk to Kyler Barnett and his story on Dion Monroe. What's going on, Patriots? I'm Kyler Barnett, and I'm here sitting with Dion Monroe, junior guard for the girls' basketball team. Let's get right to it. So, um, you know, you play, you're really good, really talented. Obviously, you're going to bring out a lot of big-time college coaches each night. You know, what's it like to play in front of big-time college coaches each game? Um, well, it's I'm honored to be able to play in front of coaches, uh, seeing how everybody doesn't get that chance. And uh, I have a lot of talent, but it's also it's a it's a win-win. Me and my teammates get to play in front of coaches. We get recruited, and it's also fun. So, playing alongside a player like Dion is a win for everybody, except the opponents. 
Well, Dion's really good at attacking the basket, which allows the defense to collapse, which will allow other players to be open. And since we lost Brody and Aaron, which was other people's also main focus besides Dion, I think that means everyone will really, really be focused on her. So, and we also have a new player, Anna, who will really contribute to the team. So I'm excited to see what she will do besides Dion and like all of us together. Because uh, Dion's an amazing rebounder. She's good at attacking the basket and having the defense collapse. There are no shortage of eyes trained on Dion, yet some aspects of her game still go underappreciated at times. I think rebounding, she led us in rebounding last year, you know, at five foot six, you know, and, and, and uh, it's not an easy thing to do. It, and it's, it's particularly hard to, uh, to take on both roles as a, as a scorer and rebounder. It just takes a lot of energy. And, um, but, but she does both very well. You know, you've accomplished a lot. You came in as a freshman, immediately started on varsity. Um, you've had a number of achievements, all conference, all state, all those things. You know, what are some things you're looking to do this year? Um, those things, but better, you know. Uh, make my team better, go further than we did last year. Um, <laughs> maybe even go to state. In Coach Cassidy's tenure here at Truman High School, he's seen a lot of really good guards come through with big names like Aaron Davis, Brody Bird, and Kiara Collier. Dion Monroe just has a little something different about her that really stands out. Well, I think uh, all those players are great players. Um, I think what probably separates Dion from the pack is her ability to get to the rim and finish tough shots around the rim. She's uh, physically strong and and probably is the you know the best penetrator, best finisher that I've coached since I've been here. Right. Um, and so you guys, you know, you've played since a freshman. You played with a lot of these girls since your freshman year. How do you feel like chemistry and you know just getting to know your teammates really well over the years will translate onto the court this year? Um, well, it's a better communication. We know each other a lot more. Uh, we know each other's uh, strengths and weaknesses. We know, we just know a lot. We have a good bond. So I mean, just. I don't know. I don't know if it's a, uh, I don't know. We're just closer now that we've grown together. You know, some of them, it's their senior year and everything, so. You know, Dion's an excellent teammate, so she, she does a great job building chemistry. And she's a great passer, especially out of the post. Uh, when we enter the ball to the post to her, she does a great job of uh, looking opposite and, and passing out and finding uh, open players on the perimeter. So, um, you know, and, and her ability to penetrate and, and kick to shooters, I think both add uh, to the ability of her teammates to get more involved in the game as well. Well, this year, well, since we've played together so long, I really feel like our chemistry is so good. Like, we are talking more on the court on and off the court. Like, we hang out with each other, and I believe, like, if you really care for your teammates, you just play harder for each other while you're on the court. I've also played with some of these girls competitively since third grade, and so that really just builds our chemistry automatically, and I'm really excited to see what we'll do this year. Dion Monroe is a straight playmaker in every sense of the word and is sure to leave some crazy stories in her wake. Okay, so I remember during game, we were playing defense, and they went to go pass the ball, and Dion came out of nowhere, snatched the ball, dribbled all the way up the court, did this crazy spin move, made the shot, and it helped us get a lead. And I remember the bench was going crazy, everyone was jumping on the court. I remember the refs were telling us, get off the court, get off the court, you're going to get technical, and it really just brought great energy to the gym, and it was really exciting. You know, you play, you, you're really good, talented, everything, all that. Is there anyone you think you like to model your game after or take inspiration from? Uh, definitely. Uh, Kobe Bryant, he's like my favorite player. He's like an all-time GOAT. I put him up maybe number one. Yeah. All right. You heard it here. I'm Kyler Barnett from THS Media, signing off.